Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, home of the Sobrology Ruler. Now for my tip of the day today, I'm taking you back to geometry class to talk about triangles, all different triangles. So make sure you subscribe to not miss any more quilting tips. Today I am taking you back to geometry class, well, only for a little bit. This first part, we're going to talk about triangles and the different types of triangles. Now these names are, might be not familiar to you especially if you're a quilter and didn't, weren't fond of geometry. But let's talk about the different shapes. Um, so we have two groupings there. So there are names based on the sides of the triangles and then there are names based on the angles. So sometimes a triangle name can be two different names based on the sides and then based on the angles. So first let's talk about a scaling triangle. So that's where no, none of the sides are equal. So that also means that the corners or the angles are going to be different for each one. Below that we see an isosceles triangle. That's where you have two sides always equal in length. So you will also then have two angles or two corners that are the same degree as well. Uh, then we have an equilateral triangle where all sides are equal. Now this triangle you might see and refer to as a 60 degree triangle in quilting. If we look at the angles, there is an acute triangle where all angles are acute. Uh, that means they are under 90 degrees. We have an obtuse triangle where one angle is more than 90 degrees. And then we have a right triangle. That might be something you hear in quilting as well, where one of the right angles is 90 degrees. Now let's look at these shapes in a quilt. So one of the most basic shapes that we use and see all the time is a right triangle. And that is also an isosceles triangle. So let's take a look, for example, in a flying geese. This is a right triangle because we have a right corner here. And then we have two equal sides and then two corners that have the same, same uh, angle as well. You will hear about a half square triangle. What is a half square triangle? A half square triangle is a square that has two right triangles in it. So uh, this is our half square triangle. It's hard to see because this one is already sewn in, but this runner is all about half square triangles. You will hear a quarter square triangle. A quarter square triangle means that we have a, a square that has four smaller triangles. They are also all right triangles and they're all isosceles triangles. So you will see this a lot. Now, is there places where we use right triangles without it being within a, a square? Yes, so for example, we use right triangles a lot for setting triangles in a quilt. Uh, this runner is all done with just right triangles sewn together in rows, so it creates this irregular pattern. But there are other ways without it being a flying geese or within a block where you will find right triangles throughout. So, but it's good to know all these different names. Now, an example of a equilateral triangle or in this case, a 60 degree triangle. So here's how you see that. So all three sides are equal, all four angles are equal. So this is a perfect example, 60 degree table runner. This one is from our Master of Astrobology Rulers book. Now the one that you probably don't see very often is a scalene triangle. That is where none of the sides are equal. But I actually do have an example for you. My Katrina quilt has all scalene triangles. They are all uneven. And so it's really fun to play with when you do something a little unconventional and cutting, so um, they are all floating so you can do something like this. So I just wanted to have this comparison for you, the geometry names and then quilting names. But let's take a look at how you can cut right triangles with the Stropology ruler. So in the Master Your Stropology Rulers book, there is a page where we can cut those 45 degree angles. That means that is that 90 um, degree one corner, so right triangles. In a pattern, sometimes you are told to cut a square and then cut it uh, twice so that you have those right triangles. 
And so there is a way to stripologize that and use strips. Well, let me show you. I have a three and a half inch wide strip here that I am going to just lay at an angle and you want to lay it at a, uh, uh, an angle like this. So following that 45 degree line on the ruler. So I'm going to align the 45 degree li line on the ruler along the bottom of the strip so I can cut my right triangles. What that means is that the long side of the triangle is going to be at the straighter grain and the two sides are going to be on the bias. So for a three and a half inch strip, I am cutting on the zero to start with and I'm cutting on the five and the 10. The 10 is uh, not going to reach all the way through my fabric. So I'm going to remove that first cut here and just slide my ruler up so that I can have that line aligned with the top of the strip now. And then I can make my cut through the 10. So that those are my first cuts. And then I'm going to turn the ruler um, 90 degrees. And I'm finding the other 45 degree line here. And now I'm lining that on top of my strip right here. There is a line extending here. The 13 inch line is going to extend down here so I can make sure my pieces are all lined up correctly. And now I'm going to make my same cuts through the zero and then five. And then I would cut through the 10, but I can't get down here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I remove that first triangle here and slide my ruler downwards, aligning that line up with the bottom of my strip. Everything is lined up and I can make my cut through the 10. And this way without cutting a big old square and then cutting that apart, I have my right triangles perfect to go into any pattern or anything else you are doing with a straighter grain on the bottom.